Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Outsourcing Practice What You Preach. Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Kevin Boone. I'm an account executive here at ProVal Technologies. I assist with business development and client management here at the company. And just as a bit of a background about ProVal Technologies, we provide outsourced centralized services for MSPs. We have been in business since 2008, and we are headquartered down in Orlando, Florida, and have a knock out in Noida, India. Today, we, we, we will be talking about the benefits of outsourcing as an MSP and how it affects your business. And as a reminder, feel free to send in questions throughout the webinar in the Q&A chat box, as we will have a Q&A portion towards the end. Um, and as we get started, there are a few questions that come to mind right away as we dive into the presentation. First off, does it make sense for MSPs to outsource when companies outsource to them? Traditionally, companies will outsource their IT to MSPs and the concept of outsourcing even further may be a little foreign to a number of MSPs. And today we will discuss why this actually may make sense. Will I be able to scale my business the way I want to if I outsource? Uh, we will be discussing this and why outsourcing may help you scale your business even more. Will I still have control over my service quality if I outsource? And would it be easier or cheaper to hire someone internally? Today, we will get these questions answered and uh, more with our panel, which includes myself, account executive here, Chase Murphy, ConnectWise team lead here at ProVal Technologies, and our special guest, Brandon Lewis, IT operations manager at BIS Consulting from Dallas, Texas. For the time being, I will turn it over to Chase so we can go ahead and get started. Chase. How's it going, everybody? Uh, I'm Chase. I'm the ConnectWise team lead here at ProVal. Um, my responsibilities include uh, helping out our customers, uh, help out making sure that everybody gets delivered what they need in their environments and things like that, as well as uh, consulting with our clients to write up new cool solutions. And I'd like to introduce our guest, uh, Brandon Lewis here. Um, Brandon, tell us a little bit about yourself. <clears throat> well, thank you for having me, uh, Chase and Kevin. Um, I am Brandon Lewis. I am the IT Operations Manager for BIS Consulting. Uh, I've been with the company for about three years. Um, Actually, next week will be my anniversary. Uh, our company has been around since 2007, and we provide enterprise um, IT uh, and GIS and web services uh, to mostly county appraisal districts and small county um, other organizations like tax entities, uh, some justice of the peace um, offices and stuff like that. So we do that mostly in Texas. Um, out of about the 254 counties in Texas, we have services at, at some level with about 180 of them. Uh, we have um, clients in Oklahoma, uh, Georgia, and uh, we could just continue to expand. Well, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. You know, I've, I've heard you guys getting quite a few accolades down there as some of the, the fastest growing in your industry. Yeah, yeah, we are very, very proud of that. Um, it, we've we've made some um, some changes uh, structurally um, uh, in our office uh, or in our organization in the last year, and we've been able to um, grow exponentially. Uh, it has been so much fun. Of course, that's yeah, an that's exaggeration, awesome. but I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with uh, tooting your own horn a little bit, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so uh, you know we've been working uh, with BIS for around uh, what two years now? Yes, sir. About right. Yes, sir. Um, so you know, really, we were hoping you could kind of run us through, you know, what challenges you were facing with your RMM, um, and you know, in dealing with that day to day, um, you know, what 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 got you to evaluating you know, what, what you needed for a vendor? Well, we've been, we've been in business since about 2007. And um, not long after that, we purchased um, LabTech, which is now, you know, ConnectWise Automate. And this is before I was with the company, but we've gone through several uh, vendors, uh, RMM vendors, um, to help us with the development, partly because, you know, we, we're a small company, um, 
about 30 employees, and we just didn't have the resources to have the technical expertise uh, to really do all the development for um, uh, lab, lab tech. I'm going to call it lab tech until, <laughs> until the very end. I'm sorry. I know it's I know it's ConnectWise Automate, but um, but you know with lab tech we weren't really leveraging the full value of it as a business, and we went through several different. Um, vendors, uh, some other are uh, some other uh, lab tech developers, and I guess we went through about three or four, at least three, since I've been with the company. Um, and in each of those instances, it just wasn't a good fit. Um, partly because not being able to deliver on time, or what we would discuss would not be the end product, or just you know whatever it just wasn't a right fit um, for the company and we just continued to move on to a development until we found a developer that um, you know really met our needs and that we really enjoyed working with and uh, that's kind of what led us to, to finding you guys awesome yeah i mean uh, we we find that a lot of msps out there really struggle with that whole concept of hire or you know figure out a solutions provider that can really deliver what they need right um you know so I'm assuming when you guys went through the whole process of evaluating other vendors as well as us, um, you know, what, what was kind of that selection process for you? You know, how, how did you end up selecting us as your uh, outsourced IT provider for your automated instance? Um, our owners, uh, we're still a private company. Our owners were at a conference uh, and came across uh, you guys and um, um, did some investigation on their own, uh, checked out you guys, um, uh, had an initial call, and then from there it was just, um, getting to know you guys um, and, um, you know, just doing our normal vetting process. Um, and I got to tell you that it was in stark contrast our experience with you in the beginning than it was with some of the other uh, vendors that we'd had before because most people can talk the talk. Um, not everyone can talk the talk and walk the walk. And I know that's kind of cliche. I'm sorry. I'm from Texas. Um, yeah, we, we like that. We're, we're yeah, cliches. Yeah. And so, what impressed us in the beginning was um, the people that we dealt with that were very knowledgeable, but then also you guys had a very organized um, onboarding process and it was written out so that we could actually see what was going to happen. And, you know, as a as a customer, if you will, when I when I get something from someone that we're going to do business with, then that's exactly that's that's how I expect. Those are my expectations that it's how it's going to go. And it, it pretty much went it, it went by the book. Uh, and we were very impressed with that. Um, it was a um, it was a good experience, you know. And you know, our relationship has developed over the last um, couple of years. And you know, I I feel like you guys are um, someone that we trust uh, to consult with and to advise us uh, on a, on on this kind of so solutions that we're looking for. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. I think. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I know it was a couple of years ago, but I think it was you and me that really went through the whole onboarding process together. Yeah. Um, you know, w was there anything um, that you found like really made a big impact throughout the onboarding process? You know, that you know that you saw like a like a change between before and after. Oh, during yeah. That onboarding process. For sure. You know, um, like I told you, like I'd mentioned earlier in the presentation is, uh, you know, we weren't fully leveraging the full strength of lab tech. And when you guys came on board and we went through, one of the things I liked that you did that some that the that some of the other, well, I, all, from my experience, all of the other vendors uh, didn't do was a deep dive into our system. Um, you wanted to know exactly how our environment worked um, and you guys spent a lot of time uh, investigating that on your end so that you could understand where we are now and then turn our conversations where we wanted to be and then that kind of helped us together kind of map out a plan um, how that was going to look like. And you know we didn't really get that from some of the other uh, vendors, and so I really appreciated that. And during that discovery phase, if you want to call it that, um, you know we were able with you guys, you were able to identify there was a lot of things that could either a be scripted better, uh, were scripted poorly, um, or was just pure deadwood, and that we needed to clean out of there. And so you know having having several different tenants, if you will, in our uh, in our lab tech um, over the years, you know, you can imagine how cluttered that could be. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I yeah, remember. and we really, yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> you you yeah. guys had about 10,000 EDFs that didn't really do anything oh, yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. It, you know, the, the example I used before is one of the other vendors, you know, did a lot of uh, VB scripting and was using lab tech really to deploy. And from our side, since we weren't the experts in it and we were depending and relying on them, we didn't really know that that was what, what was going on is they were delivering a product. It probably wasn't the most efficient way to do it. I just kind of pictured a guy there with a desk with a whole bunch of kitchen timers. And when the kitchen, <laughs> when the timer would go off, he'd say, okay, run this script. You know, that's kind of how I felt, you know, after we went through the deep dive that, oh my gosh, you know, that just doesn't, yeah, it, it was, I guess the, the short of it is it was just a, it was an eye opening experience to be able to see and have that kind of visibility and that transparency into actually what was going on and having that direct conversation. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, thank you. Appreciate the feedback, uh, you know, kind of segueing in. Um, obviously, we've, we've been providing you further support over the last couple of years. Um, kind of hoping you can give us, you know, kind of the day to day experience with uh, working with us, responsiveness. Um, you know, uh, what's your what's what's it like talking to us month by month and week by week and day by day? Oh, it's exhausting. No, uh, <laughs> I try my best. <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, I got to tell you, you know, it's, I, I kind of feel like we work for the same company, to be honest with you. And um, the kind of conversations that we have, you know, is, you know, like we're having right now is a little bit of uh, levity, but then we, you know, we have the ability to get things done. And I appreciate that because, you know, we all work uh, a lot every day. We work with people that we probably see more often than our family members. And I, our company enjoys a good time. Um, you know, every now and then we'll break out a Nerf war in the office um, just because we're geeks. Um, and I have that same kind of rapport with you guys where we can really enjoy our conversation on a personal level and then still get stuff done. It's like, well, what did you do the weekend? You know, that kind of thing. And, you know, that, that was just a relationship. As with anything of value in this world, there's some labor behind it. And we were able to put that labor in and, and get to a point where we could just really enjoy each other's company and then still get work done and be productive. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's about is driving numbers, being productive, taking care of our clients and you guys assisting us with that effort. Yeah, you know, uh, I definitely value our calls together. Um, there's plenty of times where we, we get a lot of stuff done, and then there's plenty of times where we just talk about Plex and movies and yeah. try to, you know, shoot the breeze have and have a little a good time, time together. And, yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. all work and no no play it makes Proval a dull boy, right? It makes everybody a dull boy, for <laughs> sure. You know, um, but, you know, I, I think the, one of the things that I enjoy the most, let me just finish this part, is, yeah, the, um, is the monthly calls and – what I enjoy about that is, is not only do we kind of recap our number and our metrics, which is always important. We need to know where we are and what you guys are seeing. But, you know, I love it's like um, that scene from Batman when uh, the Joker, you know, goes, he's always got the best toys. You guys can sometimes deliver some content that, you know, we weren't expecting or that we didn't even know. And it was like, oh, my gosh, this is a great thing that you might have developed for, you know, one of your other clients or whatever. And I know that you guys have developed some stuff specifically for us. Um, but I, I enjoy that that time when it's like, okay, well, what what do we? It's almost like Christmas. It's like, what do we got new this this month? You know, let's let's roll something out. And I appreciate that you guys are you know doing all the legwork and the knowledge part, of the research and understanding what's coming out in the next patch. You know, there's been a couple times when you know you've can you've advised us that you know this patch isn't stable. We recommend you wait till the next one. And it's like, oh, I'm done. I don't even have to think about it. Uh, because we've developed that level of trust and we've developed that level of of um, confidence in each other that, you know, if, if that's what you say, then boom, we're going to go with it. Right on. Yeah, I mean, I know we've written up a, a, a couple of pretty cool solutions for you guys. Um, you know, we wrote up kind of like a whole backup solution for you guys and some stuff to help, you know, manage your, your GIS um, your yep. infrastructure, really, um, you know, not, not so much, you know, what do we do to help out? You know, uh, I think it'll be good for the viewers to kind of understand what, what we did. But um, if you could speak to uh, kind of how that impacted your guys' uh, you know, your techs day to day, stuff that they didn't have to do anymore or things they didn't have to double check anymore, uh, that'd be great if you kind of kind of talk about that. Yeah. So the backup script, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that we do is um, – with our IT services is um, automated backups. And we, we use several solutions, again, depending on the size of the client. And one of the things that we always wanted to be able to do was to take, for those clients that don't have the bandwidth to do uh, bare metal backups of their workstations, because, you know, we're, again, we're talking small counties, don't have a whole lot of budgets, they may have very slow internets. Um, and one of the solutions was to 
back up just desktop and my documents um, for those users to a central location on the file server and then back that up through one of our other um, backup solutions. And you guys wrote a script for us and I probably took took us months because it just wasn't something that was very easy to do. Um, but we soldiered through it and in, in the product that we have now is um, something that we now have, you know, a data view associated with it that it just makes our text lives easier because we will go to that solution um, probably eight times out of 10 before we go to any of the other backup solutions to recover something that someone has accidentally deleted. And that and these kinds of requests happen all the time and that really saves us a lot of time um, for the, the, the non-emergency, you know, uh, file backups. Now, you know, for the, we still have the disaster recovery level um, that we would use, but this this solution has really helped us out and saved us a lot of time. Plus, you guys built us data views so that we could see at a glance exactly what was working, what wasn't working, and we were able to, um, uh, God bless Keegan, um, which is the engineer that we dealt with. Um, he probably has hair like me now, <laughs> but he was able to provide, you know, I was able to give him some feedback and he would come back to me and say, is this what you want? Is this, this, you know, this is what I did. And it worked out well because we were able to actually get some error reporting so that we could better understand on the data view exactly what was going on. And that we put a lot of time into it, but it's something that we're, we're using every day. And, you know, I feel like the 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 sunk cost on, on getting all that done has more than, in my opinion, paid for itself in our uh, ability to do things fast, 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 uh, and get that and move on to the next problem. Something that would be more critical than, you know, I mean, I, I'm not trying to say that, you know, data data recovery is not critical, but something that would just so now it's now it's so easy. We just kind of do it and we're moving on to the next thing. Um, the other thing that you got, one of the other solutions you did for us was uh, we do one of the services that we provide in our uh, geographic information services business is uh, we do deeds and we process deeds and uh, we help uh, the the counties that don't have deed processors um, figure, you know we work we do all that data for them and so one of the things was we had an internal process where they would dump their files into a folder and then that would um, that our system would grab the, grab the data, move it, and then we would work it. And so we were finding that not all the time was that working efficiently. And so you guys were able to put in some error, some monitors, uh, custom monitors for us to, to monitor that. And so now the GIS techs will get an automatic email and say, oh, this has been in there for two hours and, we, and our system hasn't grabbed it. I need to go and do it. And so from a customer service standpoint, um, it helped us identify where there was problems in our, um, our client that we developed to, to do this, but also to prevent um, customer service problems with data staying in there for, you know, hours, days at a time, which was in excess of our contractual obligations so that really helped us out. I, I think you also mentioned to be one point, you know, it's just nice having that peace of mind that it's, yeah. it's going to happen. It's going to alert you guys and that way you don't have to go and check it manually all the time right. it, just to make right. sure that you're feeling comfortable, uh, you know, we, we really try to deliver that that peace of mind to you guys on the day to day basis from from getting the job done. So I, I hope yeah. uh, I hope that's still working out really nicely. It seems it like is. it is because you haven't been asking me for yeah. support on it. So I'll no, give it a I have it. Now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all thumbs up. It is working perfectly. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, as far as you know, continuing to work with us, you know, you've worked with all of our engineers here. Um, you know, from from a support standpoint. Um, you know, we really at ProVal, you know, one of our missions is to really be an extension of your team. And I, I think you kind of put it well earlier. You know, really, we just we just want to be that person in the office that you can walk up to their desk, quote unquote, and say, hey, here's my problem. How do I solve this problem? Yep. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like we've been able to kind of plug in as that role for you guys the last couple of years. Um, you know, yeah. it's not always that we always develop the thing either. You know, there's plenty of times where you guys have brought up ideas and you're saying, hey, you know, here's our idea. Here's how we think we would want to do it, et cetera. And then, you know, we kind of explain the pitfalls or shortcomings that might, you know, come from working with the RMM. Um, so, you know, we really just try to, you know, cement ourselves in there as, as someone that you can trust to go to their desk and get this thing done, even if it's just via email, uh, but good enough right. to, to get the job done. Well, you know, I, I think that kind of ties in what I was saying earlier about um, the level of trust that we've developed with each other. You know, in the beginning, I remember submitting requests and I was very precise and it's like, I want this, I want this, I want this because of, 
you know, the relationship that I'd had with previous developers, you know, you had to be very specific. And then, you know, now it's like, uh, I could just send you like, eh, this, this is the end goal. It's like, what do you think? And that's essentially my, my, that's the beginning of my ticket with you guys. And now we have a conversation about it. And there have been times when it's like, you know what? Lab tech can't do it. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> and, um, which, you know, I didn't think it happened, but there's been in those times you've been able to, you know, suggest or uh, provide us or steer us in a direction of maybe some other solutions that you guys have dealt with before that is, you know, outside of lab tech or our contract with you guys, because, um, you know, again, we've developed that relationship where, you know, I feel as the customer, um, and it, it feels weird saying that because I don't feel like we're, I feel like we're, 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 we're the same, teammates. we're on the same team. Yeah, we're teammates, we're on the same team, but as a customer, it's, you're really interested in in solving it and it's like okay you know some of the other developers were like ah you know lab tech can't do that you know have a nice day good luck but with you guys it's like well you know have you you know you thought about this product you thought about that product and you know in some of those cases we actually went with those products because it could actually help us out and um you know it, that trust that i was talking about earlier is that i have i don't have i don't have the anxiety of like okay i need to be very precise and and put all this out because you know these guys are going to mess it up i just kind of throw it out there and then we have a conversation i just love that aspect of it um you know and because keegan will call me or whomever will call me and they'll say hey you know i got your ticket blah 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 well, you know what are you what are you trying to do here and then we would go then after talking with you guys we might go off in a completely different different direction because you know, we trust you guys to be the subject matter experts, and you have been. You've you've proven that to us over the last uh, since we've been together. I appreciate that. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Is there anything uh, else that we had to ask for uh, to take out of Brandon's day? Um, you know, one thing that I did kind of just want to bring up, Brandon. Um, you know, when it comes to support requests that you guys are sending through. Um, you know, it's not just one specific person that you're working with. You know, we have a full team of experts that, um, you know, are working on the requests that you guys are sending through, you know, whether it's Keegan, Chase, whoever it may be on our side. Um, you know, that's just one thing I kind of wanted to, to touch on and bring up to you is, you know, having that full team of experts rather than essentially, you know, just having a, a person assigned to you guys, you know, has that really affected the way your engineers or your team have been able to you know, work internally? No, not at all. You know, I, I, I look at it as, you know, yeah, um, it, it could be anybody. It could be, you know, on Shul, it could be Chase, it could be Keegan responding. But for us, when we're talking about it in the office, we're not, we're not really using those names. We're just saying Proval because we know that, you know, when we send a ticket in, it's going to get reviewed on your, on your side by whomever you guys feel is the best person suited for it. And, you know, we're, again, we have that level of confidence where it's like, yeah, just we'll see what Proval has to say. And they know that I talk to Chase all the time or they know that I talk to Keegan. They don't, they don't say don't talk, you know, they don't say talk to Keegan or whatever. Just ask Proval what they, th what they say because, you know, the answer might, might be coming from Chase or Keegan, but, you know, I, I know that they're consulting with their team in order to be able to get us that, um, the best answer possible. So, you know, for me, uh, having a whole team of, for me is, is it's invisible to me uh, because we just look at you as just the, the that one solution, that one that one entity or person that we go to. Right, exactly. Does that make yeah. sense? I don't, I don't know if that came out, but, I, but in my in my head, it sounded so much better. <laughs> I just want to make sure it came across right. No, no, that makes that makes perfect sense. Uh, Brandon, well, I appreciate you, you know, answering some questions and just kind of discussing what the relationship is like working with us and working with, you know, so outsourcing as an MSP, you know, how that has really affected you guys. You know, I really appreciate appreciate you going into detail, um, you know, how we've helped to scale your business a little bit more and kind of just free up the time of your engineers. Um, and so moving forward, that really kind of dives into the overall benefits that, um, you know, we want to just briefly chat about today. Um, you know, number one, freeing up time of your engineers. You know, obviously engineers spend valuable time on the back end of act activities. Uh, by outsourcing to a vendor like Proval, you know, your employees really now have the time to focus on client facing activities and continue to grow your business, focus on other high priority projects. And as Brandon and Chase both mentioned, really gain that peace of mind by having a full team of experts available to you, um, handling those back end issues, whether it's scripting, patch management, you know, checking backups, uh, really makes a difference for the MSP by being able to outsource those types of activities. Um, 
also, you know, engineer augmentation, when it comes to engineer augmentation, what really happens when an engineer leaves the company? Um, you know, they take all of their knowledge and skills with them. Uh, you know, the, the time, the amount of time it takes to train a new employee is extremely valuable. And by taking the proactive step of outsourcing, you honestly, you already have a full team of certified experts available to you more as an extension of your MSP team, as Brandon had mentioned, uh, you know, ready to get to work. And the other item when it comes to training is when you're outsourcing, you already have a full team of experts certified on the tools. Uh, tools are obviously becoming more powerful and more complex, and they can have a very steep learning curve. Um, you know, by outsourcing, you'll have a team at your fingertips already completely dedicated and certified on your tools, which ultimately will help you save both time and money. Um, not only will you have a team of experts to take over the management of your tools, but they'll also help to train you and your team along the way, really helping to increase your knowledge base, um, you know, whether it's through monthly calls that calls that we have or just answering specific questions about items that we're um, you know, doing within your environment. Also providing 24-7 uh, support, um, you know, in the industry today, we see that 24-7 support is becoming more apparent and necessary. Uh, you know, sometimes having on-call techs can really reduce their employee satisfaction, especially if it's, you know, false positives that are coming through, um, you know, and they're being called in the middle of the night uh, by outsourcing uh, you know, these types of services to a vendor. Uh, you'll have a team available to you at all times, which will provide Again, that worry-free mentality to you and your end clients. And it really helps to improve your service delivery while also not increasing your headcount or um, other costs, which really ultimately brings us into our last point of W2 ratio. Um, unemployment in the technology sector today is under 1%, and it really makes it more difficult to find the right candidate to fill your positions you ultimately end up lowering your W-2 through subcontracting sub and really that provides less fixed costs and ultimately provides a lower salary bill um, for the year. So just to sum up what we've really talked about between Chase, Brandon and myself, um, freeing up time of your engineers, engineer augmentation, tool expertise, access to 24-7 support and W-2 ratio. Uh, you know, these are all benefits that can come from outsourcing uh, your internal tools and processes to uh, a vendor within the industry um, like Proval. Um, with that being said, we do have some time left for questions. Um, so let's see what we've got. Let's see here. Um, I see one in here about uh, security. Um, you know, there, there's been a little, a little bit of uh, issues out there in the universe lately. Uh, you know, more of these hackers are realizing that uh, ConnectWise Control and Automate are really the keys to a kingdom. Um, so, you know, one, one thing that ProVal really focuses on for security is, uh, number one, we lock every single one of our accounts down and every single one of our clients. Um, we also consult with our clients to help ensure, you know, two factor is set up for all of their accounts um, and that, you know, all the necessary ports are open and no extra ports are open. Um, we also keep everything in our uh, enterprise level LastPass instance, um, which is all uh, locked under two factor as well, as well as IP uh, whitelisting to make sure that nobody would be able to get into any of our passwords for any of our clients including BIS, <laughs> keep it nice and secure as we can. Um, let's see, any other questions? Yeah, I see one here. It looks like um, how long does the onboarding process take? Uh, Chase, yeah. I'll let you take that one. Sure. Um, you know, uh, we, we can talk with Brandon about it too. Um, we, we, we tried to schedule an onboarding for about one month of time. Um, it can kind of vary. We, we say like one month to, uh, to maybe eight weeks, somewhere in that range typically. Um, it really depends on how uh, set up the environment is or maybe how many developers have been in there messing around with stuff for several years. And it, it can take a little bit longer to, to look through all of the individual items and get them all cleaned up. Um, what was it for, for us, Brennan? Maybe six weeks? It was about seven six weeks? to seven weeks, yeah. Yeah. For sure. We went through everything, you know, uh, 
like I mentioned, there's a lot of extra data fields in your environment, and everything. So um, it took a little bit to kind of uh, unspool all of that and figure out exactly everything that was going on. Uh, you know, we finally yeah, well, got, that's it, the case. got we, it knocked out. We could still be in the onboarding process. <laughs> yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Um, I see another one just came in. Uh, do you support hosted environments? Um, we do support hosted environments. Uh, there's a little bit less um, support that is required in those. Um, obviously, in a hosted environment by ConnectWise, they're going to take care of things like your monthly patches um, and you know your ConnectWise control updates and stuff like that. Uh, but we can still take over things like uh, you know writing scripts, uh, getting new new content built into the environment. Um, we can take care of all the solution center updates, make sure your plugins are updated all the time, uh, things like that. So yeah, we we absolutely can help support uh, hosted environments. And it looks like here um, another question. So what other services do you provide for MSPs? Um, so we ultimately provide we provide RMM uh, administration, so consulting on the uh, ConnectWise Automate platform as well as Kaseya. We have a full team of experts certified on the Kaseya platform. Um, we also provide backup administration and management. Um, you know, we have a team full of experts certified on many different backup solutions, uh, StorageCraft, Veeam, Datto, Cronus. Um, and we also provide 24-7 uh, critical alarm monitoring, which really, uh, you know, dives into being that first line of triage and remediation for, uh, you know, P1 critical alerts that are coming through after hours, again, helping out with, um, you know, the on-call text that um, a number of MSPs have. So RMM management, uh, backup administration, and 24-7 critical alarm monitoring are our core services. And then, of course, we can provide uh, project work, um, determine what the scope is, and provide some project work as well. Um, I wanted to go ahead and put our contact information up on the screen uh, for anyone who has any further questions. Feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can reach us at 407-588-0101 extension 1 or feel free to email the sales email and you can also go on our website to find a little bit more information about the services that we provide and feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions and want to learn a little bit more about the benefits of outsourcing as an MSP or just want to learn a little bit more about ProVal top technologies uh, in general. And last but not least, our team will be at the IT Nation Connect event in a couple weeks down in Orlando, Florida. You can find us at booth 201. So if you will be in attendance, uh, definitely feel free to stop by. And we'll keep an eye out for you. We'd love uh, to meet you. Yeah. Chase, Brandon, any parting words today? No. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you to Brandon Lewis for uh, coming and joining us here today. Um, appreciate your time. You're a very valued partner, and we love working with you, and look forward to uh, to, to keeping, keeping our relationship moving. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me over, guys. I really appreciate it. Of course, Brandon, thank you for your time. And thank you to everyone who watched the webinar today. We will be sending out a link um, of the recording in case you would like to go back and view it again. So again, well, thank you to everyone. And uh, if you need anything, you've got our contact information. So we'll be looking forward to hearing from you. We'll, we'll also be posting the webinar on our uh, YouTube channel as well. So make sure you go and check it out. There's a lot of other useful tips and tricks and things like that on there, um, as well as our Facebook and things like that. Um, I'd also like to give a big shout out to uh, uh, the BIS Facebook page. If you're not following it, you absolutely should be. <laughs> it's, uh, it's probably my favorite social media page on all of Facebook. So uh, I know I've talked it up pretty big, but it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I can uh, I can vouch for that. I can vouch for that for sure. Uh, again, well, thank you to everybody. Um, feel free to reach out to us, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, thank Brandon. You. Thank you.